millions of Christians believe that at any moment they may be raptured away by God and simply vanish before the terrors of the Great Tribulation come upon this world. Non-Christian friends and family members will simply find them gone, vanished instantly into thin air as Christ takes them to heaven before the tribulation. But is this idea of a secret rapture true? Is the rapture taught by the Bible? And if it is not, then will Christians be exposed to the ravages of the tribulation? Many have questions about this topic, and there is good news, because the Bible has the answers. If you want to know the real truth about the rapture, then stay tuned. Warm greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World. When we do one of our live Tomorrow's World presentations, many people come to us with questions. And one of the most frequent topics people ask about is the rapture. Is the rapture coming? When will the rapture happen? Now, of course, these questions assume the answer to two more fundamental questions. What is the rapture and is it true? That is, will there actually be a rapture in the first place? Today we're going to answer those questions from the Bible and give you the plain, simple Bible truth about the rapture. We're also going to give you an opportunity to request a free DVD that will contain even more information on this topic titled, Is the Rapture Your Incredible Future? Be sure to watch your screen for information on how to get this free DVD. Now, before we discuss what the Bible actually says or does not say about the rapture, we need to first understand what the rapture is. That can be a little difficult because when you say the word rapture, it's much like the word evolution. It can mean different things to different people. The most popular understanding of the rapture is that before Jesus Christ returns to rule the world, and before the worldwide time of agonizing trouble and suffering known as the Great Tribulation, Christians all over the world will be caught up or raptured into thin air, taken to heaven. Those on earth who are not Christians will be left behind wondering what has occurred as people they knew suddenly vanish before their eyes. Chaos will ensue at first as people are left behind to sort out the mystery of their disappearance and what it means. Meanwhile, the Great Tribulation then begins, supposedly three to seven years before Christ's return, depending on whom you talk to. Many of you watching today may have seen this concept of the rapture portrayed in popular movies and in novels, such as the famous Left Behind series by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins. This idea of being mystically whisked away from the earth is often associated with the words of the Apostle Paul, who says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 17, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord." Now most of those who believe in this secret rapture claim this verse is precisely what they are talking about. In the Latin Vulgate translation of verse 17, the Latin word for we shall be caught up is rapiemur, from rapere, from which is derived the word rapture. Well, I suppose that's it. If the Bible says that Christians are going to meet Christ in the air, then the rapture must be true. Case closed. Or is it? Many people read the Bible carelessly, often interpreting God's Word according to preconceived ideas and reading those ideas into the Bible instead of letting the Bible speak for itself. But God's Word warns against doing that, admonishing all of us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We want to rightly divide the word of truth, the Bible. What does the Bible really say about the rapture? What is the truth about this topic? 
And if the rapture theory represents a misunderstanding about the end times, then what can Christians truly expect according to the Word of God? When you examine it closely, the rapture belief contains several key elements that we can examine in the light of Scripture. Will Christians vanish around the world mysteriously and without explanation? Will Christians be caught up into the air years before Jesus returns to rule? Will Christians spend the years of the tribulation in heaven? The Bible answers every one of these questions clearly and explicitly. We'll find those answers together in the next part of our program. But first, let me pause and give you an opportunity to request this free DVD, Is the Rapture Your Incredible Future? This program is the first time we've ever offered this free DVD on television. It contains three programs explaining the truth of what God has in store for you straight from the pages of your own Bible. Whether you need a copy for yourself or for your loved ones, don't miss this opportunity to get your free DVD, Is the Rapture Your Incredible Future? We'll take just a moment to show you how to get your copy, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. In our last segment, we said that we would open the Bible and compare the belief about a secret rapture before the Great Tribulation to what God's own Word says. And I hope you'll do that with me. We don't want you to just believe us because we say something. We want you to check up on us and to believe us because it's what the Bible says. Check up on us, but check up on the other guys as well because many well-meaning preachers out there are not telling you the truth. So does the Bible teach that years before Jesus' return in visible glory to rule the world, Christians all over the world will vanish into thin air and secretly be caught up into heaven right before the global terror known as the Great Tribulation. Let's begin by examining more closely that passage that many rapture enthusiasts refer to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But this time, let's start earlier in verse 13. Paul says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now notice the important details in this passage that too many ignore. We aren't just talking about Christians flying up into the air. Paul says that this is the time of the resurrection of faithful Christians who have died. Or as he says, those who are asleep, who are soon joined by Christians still alive at Christ's return. Also note in verse 16, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Does this event sound like a secret rapture? Some sort of quiet, secret action on Christ's behalf? Or a secret return of Christ that only Christians are aware of? Personally, I don't think so. It sounds more like a public, triumphant announcement. But my opinions don't count. Let's look in God's Word for more details. Paul describes this exact same event, the resurrection of the dead Christians and rising to meet Christ in the air, in more detail in another passage, 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. Let's read there, starting in verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Notice those who are alive at Christ's coming are transformed in glory just as the resurrected saints are. Is this done quietly? No. Again, just as we saw earlier, this happens with the sound of a mighty trumpet. It happens in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. In fact, if we're rightly dividing God's word, we see an important new detail. All of this happens not just at any trumpet, but at the last trumpet. A last trumpet implies a sequence of trumpets with preliminary trumpets that precede this event. Is there any passage of Scripture that describes a series of trumpets occurring at the end time? Because if so, we then know when the resurrection and transformation of Christians is going to take place. Is it a secret rapture? In fact, the Bible does tell us when this series of angelic trumpet blasts takes place. We don't need to guess or to theorize. The Bible tells us plainly. In a moment, we'll locate the last trumpet and the resurrection and transformation of true Bible-believing Christians precisely in the Bible and in end-time events. We will see for ourselves if the truth matches the tale woven by rapture enthusiasts. But first, let me briefly give you another opportunity to request our free DVD, Is the Rapture Your Incredible Future? This program is the first time it's ever been offered on television, and you've likely never seen anything like these videos. There are no strings attached, and no one will ask you for a donation of any sort. It really is free. Request yours right now. In our last segment, we learned that it is at the last trumpet that Christians will be resurrected and transformed and will meet Jesus Christ in the air. But when does this happen? If we can locate this last trumpet event in prophecy, then we have answered the question of the rapture. And we can locate this event exactly. The book of Revelation gives us a very specific sequence of end time events that yet remain in our future. Revelation chapter 6 tells us of the seven prophetic seals of Revelation, each one broken open in order by Jesus Christ to reveal what lies ahead. Verses 1 through 8 describe the first four seals, the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse symbolizing religious deception, great warfare, worldwide famine, and global pestilence and disease that will come upon the world to an extent never before seen. Speaking of these symbolic horsemen, Revelation 6 and verse 8 says that power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. A fourth of mankind destroyed. The prophetic pathway continues then with the fifth seal, describing a great martyrdom of true Christians on the earth. In Matthew 24 and verse 21, Jesus describes this time saying, For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be. This is the Great Tribulation, a two and one half year period so terrible that no other time before nor after will ever compare. After the Tribulation, Revelation reveals that the sixth seal is opened and the heavenly signs take place, miraculous cosmic signs in earth and space, a great earthquake, the sun darkened, the moon red as blood, and the stars falling from the sky, and every mountain and island on earth shaken out of its place. These things announce that God Himself and Jesus Christ are about to personally intervene in world affairs 
and begin the day of the Lord's vengeance on earth. That time is described by the prophet Isaiah as the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. This year-long period of the day of the Lord begins when the seventh seal of Revelation is open. We read of this in Revelation chapter 8 in verses 1 and 2. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Finally, we see where a sequence of trumpets appears in the flow of end time events. After the rides of the four horsemen reach their fullness, after the great tribulation, and after the heavenly signs. Now we come to the series of trumpets prophesied by the Apostle Paul's last trump. And over the course of that year, the angels blow their trumpets, with each sequential trumpet blast bringing new levels of destruction on the earth and mankind. One third of the vegetation of the world's trees and grass burned up. One third of the seas become blood, and one third of the ships and marine life destroyed. One third of the earth's waters become bitter. One third of the sun, moon, and stars cease to shine. And the greatest gathering of human armies ever seen in the history of man clash against each other in an exchange so destructive that one third of mankind is wiped out in the resulting cataclysm. The day of the Lord will be awesome to behold, but these are only the first six of the trumpets. The seventh trumpet, the last trump, is described in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Paul says that it is at this trump, the seventh and last trump, declaring the authority of the kingdom of God over all the world, that the resurrection occurs. When true and faithful Christians, past and present, are gathered from the ends of the earth, glorified with immortality, and brought to meet Christ in the air to become His bride and to participate alongside Him in the vanquishing of His enemies and the initiation of His rule in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ Himself personally describes this moment to His own disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now be honest with yourself. Does this sound anything at all like a secret rapture? All of these descriptions are consistent. Tribulation, heavenly signs, the trumpet blast, the revealing of Christ to the world, and the resurrection gathering and glorifying of true Christians, the children of God. There will be no mystery about what is happening, and it will not be done in a corner. People will not simply vanish without a trace into thin air, taken into heaven before the tribulation, leaving their loved ones wondering what has happened. All eyes will see and every ear will hear. The tale told by rapture enthusiasts may be sincere, but it is sincerely wrong. Still, does that mean that every Christian must endure the terrors of the tribulation? No, it does not. The Bible teaches that some will and some won't. If you want to know which Christians must experience the tribulation and which do not, 
as well as how those who do not are preserved, then stay here for the conclusion of our program. But first, let me take just one more break to give you a chance to request our free DVD, Is the Rapture Your Incredible Future? This program contains three full Tomorrow's World programs on topics you must understand. Your ultimate destiny, heaven, hell, and the resurrection, and will Christians be raptured? The Bible's message on these topics is more hopeful than almost anyone understands. And as we accelerate toward the end times, you need the hope they'll provide. It really is free, with no obligations and no donation is going to be requested. Here's how you can get your copy. Welcome back. At the beginning of our program, we summarized some major points about the popular belief of the rapture that we could examine in the light of Scripture. We asked, will Christians vanish around the world mysteriously and without explanation? Answer, no, they won't. Christians past and present will be glorified together when Christ visibly appears and His kingdom is declared. All eyes will see and all ears will hear. Will Christians be caught up into the air years before Jesus returns to rule? Answer, also no. The resurrection of true Christians occurs at the very last trumpet when Christ is revealed to the world as its ruler, only days before Satan is bound for a thousand years as described in Revelation 20. Finally, will Christians spend the years of the tribulation in heaven? Again, none of these scriptures say anything of the sort. The idea of a secret rapture before the tribulation is simply false. At the same time, some Christians will be protected during the tribulation, but they will be protected here on earth. While God reserves many details to Himself, He does make this plain in a number of verses. For instance, in Revelation chapter 12, we read of the church in the end times, symbolized by a woman, persecuted by Satan the devil, symbolized by a dragon-like serpent. Starting in verse 14, we read, But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. The time, times, and half a time here is the two and one-half years of the tribulation and the year-long day of the Lord we read about earlier. And we see that while the church is protected, she is not protected in heaven. God inspires John to tell us that the place of her protection is in the wilderness, a word which is never used in the Bible to describe heaven, but which does describe locations here on earth. But notice, too, that not all Christians are protected. As we read in verse 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, some Christians, the rest of her offspring, must endure the trials of the great tribulation and the anger of Satan. The distinction, one group protected and one sent into tribulation, is reflected in Christ's comments to the two prophetic end-time churches of Revelation in chapter 3. Christians of Philadelphia are told that they will be kept from the hour of trial coming on the earth, while the Christians of Laodicea are told that they must buy gold from God refined in the fire of persecution and that they need chastening. When you read Jesus' description of each of these two groups, you see that one group is zealous for the truth, persevering and refusing to deny Christ's name or His mission. The other is described as self-satisfied and lukewarm, lacking in zeal and needing to repent and change its ways. There is a reason that Jesus Christ says to us of these times, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Whether we are protected from the tribulation or not isn't an arbitrary choice that God makes. It is fundamentally a choice that we make. 
through the way of life we choose to lead and what we do with what He gives us. Which group will you choose to be in? I hope it's the right one. I also hope you'll request the free DVD that we're offering you today. And I hope to see you right here again next week. Richard Ames, Gerald Weston, guest presenter Rod McNair, and I will be here waiting for you, ready to share with you teachings from your Bible that you'll hear nowhere else. Until then, take care.